Pastors, theology students, and congregation members who are attending Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter, it is nice to see you. I'm your host today, and my name is Lee Young-sik from Matthias Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. First, I offer up all glory and thanks to our Father God who allowed us this time to become one through the Word. Also, I would like to sincerely thank everyone who is in attendance today at Shincheonji Online Seminar. The clear and logical explanation of the revealed word of Shincheonji has been received with much joy and passion, and many believers from around the world are becoming one through the word of truth. There is one God, and there is one Bible. I hope everyone can receive the precious grace of God through the words that are testified today. Let us first offer up a prayer with a united heart. Father God, we sincerely thank you for guiding us to your precious word today once again. We'd like to also thank you for guiding the believers from various countries around the world to become one within the truth through the testimony and the revelation of the Old and New Testaments. Many believers came out today from many parts of the world. Please bestow upon them the grace of heaven so they may all perceive the secrets of heaven and become one in the Word at this precious time. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who is our Savior. Amen. Today, we'll hear the testimony of God's Word with a topic called Intermediate Lesson 10, The Signs of the Lord's Second Coming and of the End of the Age. I hope everyone will perceive the signs at the time of Jesus' return and at the time of the end of the age and what kind of life of faith we must carry out at such a time. Now, let us welcome up Instructor Jae Moo-kyun from Cheongju Church of Mandaya's tribe who will testify to God's Word today. To all the pastors, theology students, and believers from all over the world who hope for heaven and eternal life, it's nice to meet you. I am Jae Moo-kyung, head of Cheongju Church of Matthias Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. I would like to extend a sincere welcome to all of you for attending the Shincheonji online seminar regarding the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter. The words we will look at today will be Intermediate Lesson 10 regarding the second coming of the Lord and the signs of the end of age. The main reference will be from the contents of Matthew chapter 24 and John chapter 8. Through today's words, I hope that it will be a blessed time for you to clearly understand the will of God and Jesus at the second coming, the end of age. Before looking at the main reference in Matthew chapter 24, let's look at the relationship with Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23 speaks of the events of physical Jerusalem at the time of the first coming. However, Matthew chapter 24 foretells the events of the second coming of the Lord and the end of age and speaks of the destruction of spiritual Jerusalem that is the Church of the Chosen People. Now, Let's go to Matthew chapter 24 and take a look one by one. First, in verses 1 to 3, we see what motivated Jesus to speak the words of Matthew chapter 24. In verse 1, as Jesus went out of the temple, the disciples came out to point out the temple buildings. 
It is said that the temple in Jerusalem was built for about 46 years. But Jesus said that the temple will be destroyed. The temple of Jerusalem that you see will be destroyed, with not a single stone left on another. When Jesus' disciples heard these words, they gathered again on the Mount of Olives and asked Him, When will these things happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of age? Jesus answered the disciples' questions in the content starting from verse 4. What was the very first thing he answered? He said, watch out that no one deceives you. The reason is that when the end of age comes, many people will come in the name of Jesus and deceive many, saying, I am the Christ. However, it says that this must happen, but the end is still to come. That nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, where they will quarrel and fight. There will be calamities and wars that will, that will be coming. Since it says kingdom against kingdom, it is not fighting within one kingdom, but two kingdoms fighting, correct? Currently, the question of the Jerusalem temple is being answered. Then regarding the kingdom, one of them is the kingdom of God, Jerusalem. This spiritual Jerusalem is the tabernacle of believers, the church belonging to God. Then, what other kingdom fights against the kingdom of God, Jerusalem? The kingdom that fights against spiritual Jerusalem will be the kingdom of the devil, that is, the denomination belonging to the devil. What does the Bible say about the kingdom and people belonging to the devil? We can find out by looking at who Jerusalem, the kingdom of God, fought against in the Old and New Testaments of the Bible. They fought against the kingdom of Babylon, correct? Even in the Old Testament, physical Jerusalem, the kingdom of God, was devoured and destroyed by physical Babylon. At the time of the Lord's second coming, the, the denomination belonging to God was established figuratively as Jerusalem, and the denomination belonging to the devil who waged war against it is a kingdom of the world, figuratively as Babylon. Although it is not written which kingdom in Matthew chapter 24, you can find it in the book of Revelation which records the events of the Lord's second coming in detail. In Revelation chapter 13, we see the tabernacle that is heaven. It is called heaven because it is the kingdom of God, which then makes it figurative Jerusalem. It says that a beast with seven heads and ten horns will enter and will make war against the saints, overcome them, and conquer them. In Matthew chapter 24 and Luke chapter 21, this tabernacle or heaven where the saints are located is called Jerusalem, the kingdom of God, and the beast with seven heads and ten horns that enter it and makes war is called Babylon in Revelation chapter 17. Recently, we have heard the devastating news that one country in the world is at war with another country. However, in today's main reference, Matthew chapter 24, the war at the time of the Lord's second coming is the war between figurative Jerusalem, the denomination of God's chosen people, and Babylon Gentiles, the denomination of demons. This is not a war of guns, swords, or missiles, but a war within religion, a spiritual war of doctrines. 
It also says there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. Because spiritual Jerusalem was captured in the war with spiritual Babylon, it was impossible to preach the word of God, which makes it a spiritual famine. And also, because the hearts of the people, like the earth, are shaken, it also says that there will be earthquakes, which is also spiritual. It says that all this is the beginning of birth pains, correct? At that time, they will be handed over to persecution and put to death. And at this figurative Jerusalem, the place where they are put to death, they will betray and hate each other. So you can see how corrupt this Jerusalem became. It also says that many false prophets will appear and will deceive many, and that the love of most will grow cold because of increase of wickedness. And so those who stand firm to the end will be saved. If these things happen to this Jerusalem, who will be destroyed? This corrupt Jerusalem will be destroyed, correct? Then who will win? Babylon, the adversary, the kingdom of the devil, will win. Ultimately, Jerusalem, the kingdom of God, will be defeated in the battle against Babylon, and not one stone will be left on another, but all will be destroyed. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. In other words, does it mean that nothing like this will happen until it is preached to the whole world? On the contrary, when it is preached throughout the world, these are the words of prophecy that will fulfill and will come to an end. What will end at this time? What comes to an end is spiritual Jerusalem, correct? It is not the end of the nations of this world, but the end of spiritual Israel, which once belonged to God. People think this war is the physical war of the world and mistake it for the end of this world. But the spiritual war with Babylon, the kingdom of the devil, results in the destruction of figurative Jerusalem, the temple of God. If this were to happen to us, what must we do? Let's see the, through the following verses. Let's read verses 15 to 16. So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. According to the prophet Daniel, the abomination that causes desolation stands in the holy place. The holy place refers to spiritual Jerusalem, the temple of God. And the abomination of desolation is the kingdom of Babylon that is to destroy this Jerusalem. Seeing that destruction has stood in the holy place, the destroyers fought and conquered and took possession of the holy place. Then what must people do at that time? Yes, that's correct. One must flee to the mountains. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 37, and Luke chapter 17, verse 26 to 30, also say that the time of the Lord's return will be like the days of Noah and Lot. In the days of Noah, the ark eventually stayed on Mount Ararat, and they were saved. Even in the days of Lot, when there was judgment by fire, they were told to flee to the mountains. In the same way, even at the second coming of the Lord, isn't that the only way to be saved by fleeing to the mountains? Since this mountain is a mountain of salvation and a refuge, we must know what kind of mountain this mountain is and where it is so that we can escape. Is this Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world? We must find the answers in the Bible. 
In Revelation chapter 14, Mount Zion appears. At Mount Zion, God's throne is there, Jesus is there, and God's family is gathered there. The mountain in which we must flee to at the time of the Lord's second coming is Mount Zion. Naturally, just as Jerusalem, the holy place, and Babylon, the abomination that causes desolation, are not physical nations of the world, this mountain also is not a physical mountain of the world. In Isaiah chapter 60, verse 14, it says God's shepherd is called Zion. In Zechariah chapter 2, verse 7, those who escaped and came out of Babylon is called Zion. Therefore, it is God's new kingdom and new people gathered at the place where God is that is called Zion. Also, Jesus said, When destruction stands in the holy place, let no one on the roof go down to get anything from the house. And let no one in the field turn back to get his coat. Here he speaks of the one on the roof. What does it mean to be on the roof? What do you see when you go up on the roof? Isn't it the sky? Therefore, he who belongs to God, who is in heaven, does not go down to pick up the belongings of those who destroy, for there are those who cause desolation in that household. So those who are on the roof are the new chosen people who belong to God, coming out of the holy place where the destroyers stand. And the things in the house are those of the destroyers, in other words, the wine of adulteries, the fruit of knowledge of good and evil. And it says how dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Who will be those who bear children and who will nurse? This is easy to understand if we consider what Apostle Paul said. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2, it says that Paul was giving milk. In other words, nursing. But Paul is not a woman, so how can he nurse? Galatians chapter 4, verse 19 says that Paul was in childbirth pains. Obviously, Paul is a man. So how could he have trouble giving birth? Therefore, this is not speaking of physical, but it is speaking of spiritual. Nursing means feeding them spiritual milk, the food of the Spirit, the Word of God. Also, just as a woman receives the seed from a man and gives birth to a child, Figuratively, it is like a shepherd who receives the seed of the word from God and gives birth to and nurtures the congregation. Those who are pregnant and those who are nursing are all the shepherds of spiritual Jerusalem. The shepherds of Jerusalem had lost the battle against Babylon and the enemy stood there. So they were those who received woe, and it was dreadful for them. And it says, pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. And this means that just like in winter or on the Sabbath day, one must stay alert and not rest and flee from the destroyers. At that time, it says that there will be great distress, where there has not been such a great distress since the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again, correct? The beginning or the creation of the world here refers to the time when the world of spiritual Jerusalem was created, after the foundation of the world. In other words, after the creation of this Jerusalem, Jerusalem was destroyed by the destroyers, taking away both the kingdom and the congregation, so there has never been such a great distress. He said that if those days had not been cut short, no one would survive in flesh. 
It was a period during which Jerusalem will be destroyed by Babylon. In the Old Testament, Jerusalem was destroyed by Babylon for 70 years. However, when the Lord returns, when the New Testament is fulfilled, the period of destruction will be reduced. Going to Revelation chapter 13, which is the same as the content of the main reference, the period of destruction was reduced to 42 months. The reason the period of destruction was shortened in this way is so that the elect may be saved in the flesh. The following words that were given were words of warning. And it says, even if someone says that Christ is here or there, he told us not to believe. False Christs and false prophets will appear, and if possible, deceive even the elect. So even if they say that Christ is in the desert or in the inner rooms, do not believe them. The reason is that just as lightning comes from the east and flashes in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man be. If Jesus comes in the flesh, He wouldn't come flashing here and there, correct? In the Bible, it says that the Spirit moves like lightning. And because Jesus at the second coming comes as Spirit, it says that He will come like flashes of lightning. Therefore, even if someone says that Jesus in flesh is here or there, do not be deceived. Next, we will read verses 29 to 31. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. And He will send His angels with a loud trumpet call. And they will gather His elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. Immediately after the distress, the sun is darkened, the moon does not give its light, and the stars fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies are shaken, it says. Does this mean that the literal sun, moon, and stars in the natural sky darken and fall? Then, nothing will exist on this literal earth. Here, the sun, moon, and stars are figuratively represented. In Genesis chapter 37, verses 9 to 11, we see that Jacob's family, God's chosen people, is called the sun, moon, and stars. The heaven that is being destroyed in the main reference is the tabernacle of spiritual Jerusalem, and the chosen people of this Jerusalem at the second coming of the Lord are referred to as the sun, moon, and stars. The reason why the sun, moon, and stars darkened and does not give off light was that the shepherds and evangelists in the spiritual Jerusalem were destroyed and could not preach the light of God's word. Also, they originally belonged to God in heaven, but because they belong to destroyers, that is expressed as them falling from heaven to earth. This is not the end of the physical world, but the end of Jerusalem. In other words, the end of the world of spiritual Jerusalem, the end of age. At the beginning of Matthew chapter 24, the disciples asked Jesus questions about His coming and the signs of the end of age. For Jesus to come, there must be signs of the end of age. And at that time, it says that nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And it was a war between Jerusalem, the denomination belonging to God, and Babylon, the denomination belonging to the devil. And Babylon destroyed Jerusalem. 
It tells us that these things must happen for Jesus to come. So after the sun, moon, and stars have darkened and have fallen, they will see Jesus coming on the clouds with His power and great glory. And it says He will send His angels with a loud trumpet and they will gather the elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. So, what is the reason for the angels gathering the elect? The seed that was sown at the first coming, according to Matthew chapter 13, they ripe to become first fruits that is harvested in Revelation chapter 14, and they are sealed in Revelation chapter 7 to create the 12 tribes. In Matthew chapter 8, verses 11 to 12, it says that those who are not harvested are the subjects of the kingdom that is thrown outside into the darkness. And those who are harvested are those who come from the east and the west and take their places in the kingdom of heaven. In this way, at the second coming, the end of age, there is a spiritual Jerusalem which is destroyed by betraying God, and there is spiritual Babylon that which entered Jerusalem and fought and destroyed it. It says that all of this will happen before this generation passes, and heaven and earth will pass away. But the words of Jesus will never pass away, so the prophecy of Matthew chapter 24 will surely fulfill. But no one knows the day or the hour. but only God knows. A believer who hopes for heaven and eternal life must always be alert and reflect on these words and be able to know who you are and whether I was created according to the Bible. So, how must one know? We can see this by looking at the next content. The reason is that two people will be in the field, and one will be taken, and the other will be left. And two women will be grinding with a handmill, one will be taken, and the other will be left. During the time of harvest, where the elect is being gathered, the one who will be taken is the one who is reborn, of God's seed and is harvested. The one who is left is the one who is born of the seed of the devil and will not be harvested. Which words will we be the reality of? I pray that we will always be alert so that we are those who are harvested and become God's new kingdom and new people. Next, let's read verses 45 to 47. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for the servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. I tell you the truth, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. Finally, Jesus said, Then there will be a faithful and wise servant in charge of the saints, of the servants in the master's house, and give food at the proper time. And he said that the master will entrust all that he has to the servant. Then what era is this referring to? What is the food given at the proper time? And who is the faithful and wise servant whom Jesus entrusts with all his possessions? The era is the end of age when Jerusalem will be destroyed and at the time of harvest. Matthew chapter 24 is a prophecy that will be fulfilled at the second coming of the Lord that Jesus spoke about while he was on this earth. 
Revelation 13 is an event that occurred at the time of fulfillment of Revelation, and Matthew chapter 24 and Revelation chapter 13 are the same content that speaks of the destruction of Jerusalem, the tabernacle of God. The food given at the proper time is not food for the body, but food for the spirit. In the case of Matthew chapter 24, the word of Matthew chapter 24 is the food to eat, and at the time of Revelation, the word of the fulfillment of Revelation is a food to eat at that time. The food that we must eat at the time of the second coming of the Lord and given at the proper time is the words that testify about the fulfillment of the prophecies of the four Gospels and the prophecies of the entire book of Revelation. And it is the food for the proper time, for this time. It is the words of prophecy and the word that testifies to its fulfillment. The faithful and wise servant who gives this food in Revelation chapter 2, verse 17 says that Jesus gives the hidden manna to him who overcomes. In Revelation chapter 10, there is a shepherd like John, the new John, who receives the open book, eats it, and feeds all peoples with this revelation. This is a faithful and wise servant who gives food at the proper time. Jesus will entrust all his possessions to the shepherd, correct? Revelation chapter 3 verse 12 says that he will write the name of God, the name of the new Jerusalem, and the new name of Jesus on the one who overcomes. Just as God entrusted everything to Jesus at the first coming, Jesus promised to entrust everything to Him overcomes at the second coming. This shepherd becomes the promised shepherd of the New Testament. At the second coming of the Lord, shouldn't people meet this promised shepherd and receive God's food at the proper time, eat it, and live eternally in, eternally in heaven, correct? However, it says that all nations are drunk with the wine of adulteries, which is the food of the devil. In Revelation chapter 18, it even says that all nations are destroyed with this wine of adulteries, and they commit adultery with them. Where will those who are drunk with the wine of adulteries belonging to the devil go? That's correct. They will end up in hell. However, because they are drunk, they do not know where they are going. They do not receive the word of truth even if it is preached to them, but rather persecute and kill. It was the same at the first coming. Let's read John chapter 8, verse 44 to 45. You belong to your father, the devil and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. At the first coming, Jesus testified the revelation of the fulfillment of the Old Testament to the traditional religious world of Judaism. This was the food that they must eat at the first coming, food at the proper time, and it was God's words of truth. But the Jews did not listen, and they lied and spoke their own judgments. Therefore, who was their father? Jesus testified that their father was the devil. Therefore, they did not believe even when truth was preached to them, and they persecuted, blasphemed, and even killed Jesus. Like this, at the time of the Lord's second coming, which takes place in Matthew chapter 24, the promised shepherd testified to the fulfillment of the book of Revelation to the traditional churches. 
This is the food that one must eat at the time of the second coming, which is the food at the proper time. But who will be their father if they do not listen to this word of revelation and tells lies and persecutes and kills instead? At the time of the second coming, the traditional churches pride itself on being the chosen people, but they have not been harvested. Rather, they wrote on their door saying, harvesters are not allowed to enter, and they persecute and slander. In fact, they do not listen to the testimony of the prophecies of the New Testament that have been fulfilled, but instead have even expelled, imprisoned, and even killed by forced conversion for people of God's saints. According to John chapter 16, Matthew chapter 10, and Matthew chapter 25, the twelve tribes of God's new kingdom and new people are being persecuted. In every era, who belonged to those that persecuted? And to whom did those who are being persecuted belong to? Even 2,000 years ago, traditional Judaism persecuted Jesus. And even today, it's the traditional churches that are persecuting the 12 tribes of God's new kingdom. We must re reflect upon the words of Jesus and think, am I carrying out the work of persecution or the one being persecuted? Have I been harvested or someone that was not? Also, today, the promised shepherd who overcame and God's new kingdom and new people will not be destroyed, but rather, the destroyers will come to an end and the eternal kingdom of God is established and fulfilled. So I pray that you will find the promised shepherd and the promised kingdom of God through the Bible. I'll organize what we covered today. Matthew chapter 23 is about the physical Jerusalem at the time of the first coming. And Matthew chapter 24 is about the spiritual Jerusalem at the time of the Lord's second coming. The event that will occur at the second coming of the Lord will be a war between Jerusalem, the kingdom of God, and Babylon, the kingdom of the devil. Jerusalem will be destroyed and come to an end. And so there is Mount Zion that one must flee for salvation. This mountain is the 12 tribes of God's new kingdom and new people. At this time, since a faithful and wise servant gives food at the proper time, we need to find the, the, the shepherd, the one who overcomes, New John, promised in the New Testament. Receive the word of Revelation, eat it, and be harvested. Let's not be like traditional Judaism, where even when truth was being preached, they did not believe, but instead persecuted. Instead, let's check and make sure that we know who we are according to the Bible and be created according to Scripture. Next time, a lecturer who will be able to share the message better than me will come and testify to the Word from Intermediate Lesson 11, the wedding banquet of the Lamb and the lamp and the oil, with the main reference from Matthew chapter 25. We look forward to seeing you again next time. Lastly, I will wrap up by proclaiming we are one in the meaning of God, one in God and in Jesus. We transcend races, nations, and religions, and we are one in God. We are one. Let's all pray together. Father God, we thank you so much. We sincerely thank you for the grace you have bestowed upon all of us to listen to your words through the Shincheonji online seminar at this time, together with pastors, theology students, and believers in God and Jesus from all over the world.
Since the testimony of the Revelation and the Old and New Testaments are being testified according to the principles of who, what, where, when, why, and how, grant us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand so that we can follow the guidance of the revelation of your words and dwell together with you in your kingdom. We pray that you will keep us healthy and strong in spirit and in flesh until the next time we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to the end. Do you know the true meaning of the wedding banquet of the Lamb? And do you know when and where it takes place? And have you prepared the lamp and the oil? Who are you according to the Bible? Are you the ones who married the devil in Revelation chapter 18? Or are you the ones who married the lamb in Revelation 19? As you've just seen in the video, we'll hear the testimony under the topic of less than 11, Matthew chapter 25, the wedding banquet of the lamb, the lamp and the oil. The seminar will start at the same time as it did today. Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter, is being broadcast in 24 different languages to the whole world via the official YouTube channel of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. We're also hearing the good news that various denominations from around the world are wanting to become one with Shincheonji. Please do attend our next seminar too so all of us can deepen our perception of God's Word. If you have any further questions about Shincheonji Church of Jesus and our teaching besides today's lesson, please call the number you see on the screen anytime you like. We'll make sure to guide you kindly. We'll conclude today's seminar with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Family of God who has been with us throughout this seminar, thank you very much.